Hi everyone and welcome to this month's Cruel Chat. As it's December and we're all starting to wind down for the year, I know a few of us have been talking about New Year's resolutions and what we'll do differently in 2015. One good habit that we do want to get into is performing regular link audits, especially since Google's announcement about continuous algorithm updates. What with it being the party season for many of us, we also thought we'd cover something a little less taxing than faceted navigation as we covered in the last webinar. So it may be an oldie but a goodie and it has been covered a lot, but a good link audit is a fundamental of SEO. And so that's the topic for today's webinar. If you have any qu questions, please tweet us at deepcrawl using the hashtag crawlchat. We're joined by Deepcrawl's global account manager, Kit Nichols. Hi, everyone. We also have JJ Grice, search strategist at uh, Branded3. Hi, JJ. Hi. Kit works closely with some of our clients on their various projects, including link audits. And JJ has a wealth of experience, and so we're pleased to have him here to share some tips with us. Looking at the, the agenda, today we'll be covering outbound link audits, inbound or backlink audits, tools that, to help you with your audit, an action plan you can use for 2015, and then we'll have a quick summary and q and I'll now pass you over to Kit, who's going to talk to us about outbound link audits. Thanks, Erno. So today I'll be looking at completing an outbound link audit, including what it is, why it's important, and what it involves. Obviously, there's a lot of focus on looking after your backlink profile, while your own outbound links are often neglected. So it's definitely a good one to kick off the new year with. Okay, let's start by looking at what an outbound link audit actually is. Very simply, it's auditing the quality and relevance of the sites that you link to. So in this Guardian example, they have four outbound links on this page to various sources, therefore they're endorsing their links. In short, an outbound link audit is important so that you can ensure that your site provides useful information to your visitors, not just with the content itself, but also with the content that your links are endorsing. Okay, so, uh, so what does it involve? There are four parts to it. Firstly, you want to look at performing technical checks of external links. Secondly, looking at the content and performing editorial checks. Thirdly, reviewing your older content, um, which is especially important for larger and for older sites. And lastly, you want to uh, look at putting a strategy in place in order to future-proof for ongoing content, which is especially important for content-rich sites. Okay, so why is it important to do one? Looking at it from two perspectives, firstly of the visitor and also of search engines, um, before an audit you may be misleading your visitors, sending them to broken pages or interrupting their journey, their online journey. It means that they can't trust your site. From a search engine perspective, they may be associating you with low quality or spam sites and they won't see you as particularly credible. After an audit, you're aiming to improve engagement with your visitors uh, by providing linked sources that are more authoritative and trustworthy. Uh, they're likely to return more often um, and therefore you're seen as a more credible authority. From a search engine perspective, um, after completing an outbound link audit, hopefully they'll see you as only providing quality, relevant sources, again helping to improve your credibility. So now what do your outbound links mean from an SEO perspective? Let's say you have a site that's about travelling, however you have links out to a sports news site, tech deal site, fashion blog um, and a site about recipes. Um, at this point, all you're doing is confusing the search engines who are trying to classify your site and ultimately relate you with relevant keywords. Instead, let's say you've audited your travel site and it now has related outbound links, for instance, to, to a travel blog, uh, to Skyscanner, to the Lonely Planet website and to a holiday shop. It means that the search engines now have a much better idea of what kind of category your site falls under. 
course, it's important to remember that this is only one of hundreds of different signals that help Google to classify your site. However, to get an idea of what your links, both for, both for inbound as well as for outbound, um, categorize you as, then a helpful and underused tool is the uh, Google Related Search. You can use it in the same way as you would for the site search. Um, here I've used Facebook as an example, and we know it already falls. We already know it falls under a social media site. Um, as you can see, Facebook relates to other social sites such as Twitter, such as Foursquare, uh, LinkedIn, and also Flickr. Um, of course, as with all of the Google tools. The algorithm that makes this up is unknown or it's unclear, um, but it is believed to be built largely on linking structure. So if lots of site A's link to both site B and site C, then both site B and site C must be related. So you can use this to consider which of your sites uh, you are suggesting are actually related with your own outbound links. Um, is this true? Are they really what you consider to be related? Okay, so now you've got an idea about what your outbound links are actually doing, uh, you want to move on to correcting your outbound link profile. So we start with some technical checks. There are three parts to this. Um, firstly, you want to look at follow or no follow links. So anything that's low quality or user generated, um, make sure these are no followed. Um, this should uh, especially be the case uh, when it comes to forums or to comment sections to avoid passing any link juice onto low quality sites. Uh, while you're at it, if you have any affiliate or paid links, check these are no follow too. Um, Obviously Google is much better at recognising both types of links, but it's worth amending this anyway. You should do the same for embedded items such as plugins or widgets. Um, they may have links out that you don't want to endorse. Um, and lastly, if there's anything that's actually in your content itself that you don't want to allow, uh, sorry, that you want to allow visitors to access, but isn't relevant to your site or topic, then you can add no follow in here as well. Secondly, you want to audit all of your links um, and as you're going through them, you want to check for anything that should be removed. Consider running a malware check on external domains. Um, so you can either download, you can either download a malware checker or you can use um, a free online checker like SiteCheck which will allow you to check one domain at a time. Um, we've added a link in the end uh, to SiteCheck if you want to have a look at that. Obviously this is because you don't want to be a risk to your visitors. Um, secondly you want to check the HTTP status code for all of your outbound links. Um, remove any that are now returning a 404 error. Um, even though a visitor is leaving your site at this point, um, you're, still, you're still ending their user journey um, if you're sending them through to a uh, 404 page. Finally, uh, look out for any links that are returning a 300 error. Um, whether this is a 301 or a 302, um, status code. If possible, make sure that you amend the link to the redirected page. Um, however, make sure to keep an eye out for any redirect loops and remove these or find a suitable alternative if possible. Essentially at this point, um, the sites you link to might be changing their site structure on a regular basis, meaning that any of your older links uh, could quite easily no longer be useful. Um, so it's important to run a regular outbound link audit so that you can keep on top of this. Okay, so in order to, com to complete these technical checks, you, you need to see, you need to be able to see all of your outbound links. So for a really quick view of everything, you could use something like the SEO chat free link analyzer. 
which as you can see here will give you a list of all of the outbound links for one page at a time um, showing you the URL and the link anchor text. However, if you've got a larger site um, and you want a more comprehensive view of, of everything going on, then you can use deep crawl, which will show you not only the URLs and the anchor text, but also the HTTP status code um, and whether it's followed or no followed. So you can start to do some of the technical checks that we were talking about. The next thing to look at is doing some editorial checks. As with anything you do um, to optimise your site, you need to consider whether what you're doing is for a human perspective, so whether it's for uh, whether it's user friendly, or whether it's for robots um, and it's just for the crawlers. So a few points to consider when you're looking um, at making sure that your outbound links um, are user friendly. Firstly, is your anchor text engaging? Make sure you uh, don't use exact match unless it makes sense. Um, and if the link is in the content itself, don't just link using the URL as the anchor text. Secondly, are you linking to any spam sites? Um, if you've done any reciprocal linking in the past um, with your link building strategies, um, you may have spam links that still exist, so you want to consider removing these. Thirdly, uh, think about how many links are actually too many links. So how many links have you got on a page? Uh, obviously this is going to fluctuate depending on the content itself. Um, but start to consider what is a reasonable number for your page. Also, you want to think about where exactly you're placing your outbound links, whether they're in the footer, whether they're in the nav bar, um, if they're in the content itself or if they're site-wide. Um, do you really want to give the site that you're linking to that much or even that little exposure? You want to start thinking about how value, how valuable you consider that particular part of your site to be and whether the source itself is actually worth it. Lastly, after you've been through all of your old content, then you want to make sure to future-proof any future content. So a few pointers from us include, firstly, uh, making sure that you read the whole page that you're linking to. Don't rely on the headline or, or on just the headline. Um, read, the, read the page and see if the information is correct, trustworthy and contextual. Secondly, does the content on the external page on the external page actually add anything to your argument? If not, your visitors or the readers may just bounce back either to your site or straight into the search results. Make sure you don't stuff your anchor text with any keywords. Uh, use natural language that encourages people to click through, um, but really try your best not to use the click here or read more um, as anchor text. And lastly, make sure you set your links to open in a new window. This obviously ensures that uh, your readers can, can read the external content without having to leave your website and without having to um, end a user journey on your site. And that's it for completing an outbound link audit. Um, hopefully by going through these steps you should be able to ensure that you not only know who you are linking to, but also that you are confident in endorsing these people. Okay, thanks Kit. So essentially, by linking to someone, you're endorsing both their site and their content. Therefore, you must be careful about outbound links, that the outbound links on your site are of good quality, right? Yeah, correct. So what about inbound links? JJ Grice from Branded3 will now talk us through auditing those. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for your time today. Um, so. As Kit was talking about um, an outbound link audit, I'll be looking at a, an inbound link audit. Um, firstly, why do we classify links? Um, something that we have produced internally at Branded Free is, is a, a product called Search Due Diligence. So 
rather than just looking at links of a site, it does encompass everything else that comes with um, a site's potential SEO performance. Um, so looking at content and, and pan, the Panda algorithm as well as the Penguin algorithm as well. And it's just really assessing whether or not the site itself is at risk of a, of a, a potential penalty in future and, and what we need to do to go about um, protecting that site from a penalty. Um, second and thirdly are very um, closely related. So uh, the Penguin algorithm, um, that recently updated uh, in October actually. Um, and then as recently as last week, Google have announced that the Penguin algorithm will be a, a more of a continuous update. So uh, the reason why we would classify links is to protect us against this algorithm. So any detrimental, uh, detrimental impact from this, uh, from this algorithm, uh, we need to protect ourselves against. So a regular audit of, of your backlink profile is, is something that is essential um, to do this. Um, similarly, uh, with a manual penalty, so if you have had a manual links penalty before, um, or if you currently have one, it's important that you do a full check of, uh, of your backlink profile in order to lift that penalty. Um, and a lot of work needs to be carried out um, in terms of, of auditing the link profile and, and checking whether or not um, the links themselves need to be disavowed. Um, and, and you need to go through that process in order to lift that penalty. Um, negative SEO, um, I'm not sure if anybody has, has had any experience with this before. Um, if you have, please uh, tweet out to us and, and we're happy to answer any questions when it comes to that. But essentially with negative SEO, um, it's something that you do need to audit your backlink profile for just in case that, that does ever happen. Um, we, have, we have seen cases of it happening with our own clients. Um, it's something that we do need to be on top of um, in terms of maintaining our own um, backlink profiles and ensuring that anything like that is, um, is very much clamped down and that we're not susceptible to these, to these attacks. Um, and lastly, just to summarize uh, the, these, these points of why we do classify links is um, if you do have knowledge or if you have had um, a previous SEO, SEO agency in the past who have, who have gone out to build links simply for SEO purposes, um, if you do have knowledge of those links, then, then it's vital that you do that you do uh, this about those links and, and audit the remaining of the uh, of the link profile as well. So it's uh, yeah, it's important to to carry out these regular inbound link audits. So uh, the impact that, that a manual link penalty can have on a site is is pretty severe. Um, this example is, is Music Magpie, which they were um, penalised earlier this year. Um, it was a fairly well documented example of of Google um, applying manual action to a site. Um, and as you can see here, um, by the way, this is a graph taken from search metrics. It's probably something that you that most of you are, are already familiar with. But um, we can see from this graph that when they were um, issued with the manual links penalty earlier this year, in around um, January, February time, um, they did see a huge decline in visibility, and, and it really illustrates the the impact that um, a manual links penalty can have on a site, and um, the loss of traffic as well is is, is very severe, and it's. Um, it's something that you need to you need to take seriously, and it's something that um, it needs a lot of a lot of time and effort in order to uh, to overcome the, the impacts of, of these penalties. So I just want to talk a little bit about the the process that we have in place at Branded Free. Um, we personally feel that it's a it's a very very agile process. It's a um, a robust process, um, something that has worked uh, tremendously for ourselves. Um, we do, in fact, have a 100% uh, record when it comes to lifting manual penalties. So uh, we do believe in this process, and we believe that it does work. And, and we, we do recommend that it, it's something that other people take on board. And, and if you have got problems with manual link penalties, then, then you won't go far wrong in, in, in using this process that we have. Um, so to start with, we do need to collect the link data. Um, now, it's fairly. It's fairly difficult to collect every every link or every data on every link that your, your backlink profile is made up of, but um, we recommend going to, to a multiple array of, of sources, so, such as Webmaster Tools, um, Ahrefs, Majestic SEO, um, Open Site Explorer as well, to name a few. Um, interesting thing to note as well with Webmaster Tools, um, as well as Google Webmaster Tools, it's important to, to look at Bing Webmaster Tools as well, because a lot of the time from, from our own experience, um, Bing do um, supply more of a uh, comprehensive list of, of links and uh, um, the quantity of links that, that we pull from, from Bing Webmaster Tools is, is uh, 
probably on par with Google, um, so it's important to, to look to that source as well. Um, so once you've got all that data, um, we would then recommend running a live link check just to determine which links are still live and which links do need to be audited. Um, as well as the live links, we do need to look at which links are, are followed and no followed. So any links that are no followed, um, we would probably recommend not really having um, to look at those for now and just concentrate on the ones that are followed and that are live. Um, so you can use the crawls crawling tool. Um, alternatively, we have a uh, an in-house tool that we have, we have uh, custom built that we uh, we run um, a check of those links on, so we can easily work out whether those links are live and which ones we do really need to to concentrate on and, and go on to audit. Um, after we've we've got that list, so after we've we've had that list of, of all the links that are live um, within our backlink profile, we then what we do internally is we then cross-reference that to a, a database that we have um, that we have put together. So that database is um, based on link audits that we've carried out in the past. So where we have um, classified sites previously, uh, we can cross-reference with this database and um, easily work out which links um, already need to be disavowed without having to to manually audit them again. So it's um, it's it's really uh, it's a really important step in the process. It it saves lots of time and energy. So uh, that's that's the third process um, that we carry out. Um, the fourth one, you would then do the uh, do the, the nitty gritty. So so the manual audit of all those links. Um, I'll talk about the reason why we do a manual classification in a later slide. But um, really, this is the the time consuming bit where you do have to rigorously um, audit your backlink profile and ensure that. Um, uh, that you are being being aggressive, so any links that are suspicious um, and do need disavowing, um, we need to ensure that this is done properly in this in this part of the process. Um, and after we've audited those links, we then recommend disavowing. Um, again, it's something that I'll I'll talk about in a later slide um, in this webinar. But um, in terms of disavowing over link removals, um, but essentially what we do uh, at Branded Free is is we do a lot of disavow work, so um, of the links that we've audited in this in this process, we then um, put together a disavow file, and which is then submitted um, via the disavow tool. And it's um, again something that's worked well for us, and something that we've seen a lot of success from. Um, so uh, yeah, that is that is the process in a nutshell. So um, after we've we've carried out that process, just to talk a little bit about the the manual classification side of things. Um, so when we are looking at links. Um, the first question we do ask ourselves is is whether or not the, the, the site that the link is coming from, whether or not it's a harmful website. Um, if it is a, a harmful website, then we would automatically uh, disavow that link. Um, if it isn't a harmful website, so if, if the website is, is fairly clean and if it's a um, a natural website, a site that is is, is credible as such, um, then we do look at the link itself. Um, so for a start, we look at um, we look at it from a domain level point of view, and then we then we look at it from a link level point of view. So if the site is okay, then we look at the link. Um, if the link is unnatural in terms of um, whether it's been placed in the past uh, just for SEO purposes, or whether the link is very uh, anchor text heavy, um, we need to determine and work out whether or not it is unnatural. Um, and obviously, those signals. So whether the the anchor text is heavy, those sorts of signals are, are very Good indicators to us in terms of looking at whether or not it is unnatural. If it is unnatural, then we would disavow. And if not, then we would we would keep those links. So after we've, um, I just to talk a little bit and, and go into a little bit more detail in terms of uh, manual classification. So when we talk about harmful websites, um, we look at um, in terms of what makes up a harmful website. Um, any site that is 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 an article syndicator or. Uh, an SEO directory, or simply a blog that has, has been set up to sell sponsored or, or paid for posts, um, they would all make up a, a harmful website. Um, all individually, not as not as a whole, uh, as a whole, obviously. Um, so yeah, they're part of the the sort of process that we go through when we're, we're to, when we're determining what makes up a harmful website. Um, secondly, when it comes to unnatural links, uh, similar to what I what I said uh, before. Um, when it comes to an unnatural link, if the anchor text is heavy and if the link um, is has simply been been placed to, for SEO purposes, um, so if it's a paid guest post, even um, fairly good indicator of that would be um, a disclaimer of any sort. So 
um, if you have been involved in, in you know, building links through guest posts, um, any disclaimer would be a good indicator that, that it that has been paid for. Um, so we do need to remove those links. And simply, if the if the client or your site has been mentioned completely out of context, um, we would get those links removed as well. So if that link has been just shoehorned into a into a piece of content, um, which it, it used to happen quite often in terms of uh, old link building tactics and, and practices that were carried out um, previously. So that would all comprise what what would be deemed as a, an unnatural link. Um, and on the flip side, when it comes to natural links, so if a client or if, if your site has been um, successfully um, mentioned as part of a, a, a successful ad campaign or a PR campaign, then um, those links are perfectly fine. Um, you know, if, if the if the site has been mentioned in a news article, um, and if it if it really is just authoritative context, and if it's um, something that is just natural and something that that somebody has picked up somewhere down the line, and that they have linked to your site. Um, off the back of that, then you know there's, there's no harm in, in keeping those links, and, and those are just examples of that. So, in terms of why we do a, a manual audit, um, I mean the the penalty or, or the yeah the penalty that, that Google um, applies to, to sites so is named a, a manual action penalty, uh, a manual link penalty, a manual action on your site. Um, we feel that it does deserve a, a manual answer, so. Um, Google do want you to, to see, um, they do want to see a lot of effort from, from your side in terms of getting that penalty lifted and, and doing all you can to, to ensure that your link profile is clean and that it's, um, that it's rid of any links that have, have previously been built for SEO purposes. So, and when it comes to automated tools, so there are a lot out there, um, some are better than others, um, but we've used, uh, we've used some in the past and we feel that uh, the manual process that we have in place is, is far more effective than these automated tools and um, the success rate goes it speaks for itself in a way. Um, like I said before, we do have a 100% record when it does come to to, uh, to lifting manual links penalties, so um, we do believe in the manual process. Um, and I think it's also important to note that with automated tools, they do look a lot um, at you know site metrics like page authority and domain authority and you know, although these metrics are, um, are good indicators as to whether a site is, is a good site or a bad site, sometimes you kind of have a site that is, is, isn't the, the greatest authority or doesn't have the greatest domain authority, um, yet it might be a, a fairly natural website and a site that is naturally linked to your client or your, your own site. So um, it would be unwise to, to uh, automatically assume that that any site that has, has a low authority score needs to be disavowed um, or removed, um, which is why we do stay clear of, of these automated tools. And it's um, often the case anyway that you will need to, to manually recheck um, what the, the automated tool has classified as, as being a good or a bad link. So as I mentioned before, um, there is a, a fairly sort of popular discussion, I think, amongst the SEO community in terms of whether or not we should be actively um, removing links or, or contacting webmasters to remove links. Um, the stance that we take is that we, we don't do this. Um, we have done in the past. Um, it's not really worked as such for us. Um, we feel that a lot of the time, um, well, around 70, 70 to 80% of the time, um, sites that you do contact, um, it will be a, a simply a faceless website, so a site that really hasn't got anybody on the other end. Um, so. So nobody is, is, is there to answer your, your query about having a link removed. Um, so when it comes to should we remove links or shouldn't we remove links, I think it all comes down to as well on top of this, if you do have a relationship in place with the webmaster or if, if you control that link that, that you want to have removed or disavowed, then, then go out and, and, and get that link removed if you do have control over it. And if not, then simply disavowing um, does work and it has worked for us. Um, and we are great advocates of that, and I think that Google have, have previously gone on record to say that, um, that disavowing is, is something that, 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 is, that is, is okay to do. If, if, if you are struggling to get a link removed, or um, even if you don't have a links penalty at all, it's, it's still important to, to regularly use the disavow tool and disavow anything that you feel is, is, um, is affecting your backlink profile um, in many ways. So yeah, from just to, to wrap that up, um, 
from our experience, disavowing is enough. Um, I've linked to a, a blog post in this slide, so please have a read of that and um, yeah, let me know your thoughts and, and, and your own experiences on that because it would be good to, to hear um, your thoughts. Um, and then just to lastly, just to say on, on that topic as well, um, we would highly recommend not to not to pay to remove any links. Um, I think when when you know these manual links penalties when they when they were first being rolled out, um, a lot of webmasters were scared and um, they were contacting other sites and they were uh, webmasters were coming back to them asking for payment and, and a lot of the time you know people did pay to have links removed. But Google have gone on record to say that um, any any links that uh, you know any webmasters asking for links to be or asking for payment for links to be removed um, just to simply disavow. So, so yeah, so the disavow tool that, that was introduced to us back in October 2012. So we've had uh, access to it now for two years. Um, like I said before, Google do recommend using this disavow tool um, even if you don't have a, a manual links penalty. Um, we also have had experience of, of lifting penalty uh, or penguin penalties um, or side effects from the penguin algorithm. We've had experience uh, lifting those penalties uh, simply using the disavow tool. So this just doesn't work for the the manual lint penalties, but it's also it also works in it also works well in, in recovering from penguin. And we've, uh, we've like I said, we've had recent experience of that um, as recent as as the the latest update back in October. We had a client. Um, who we um, we wrote a blog post for um, on our own on our own blog, and we, we spoke about the, the effects that that the penguin uh, algorithm had had on their site and how um, using the disavow helped the, the site to recover essentially. Um, when it comes to using the disavow tool, don't be afraid to use it. Um, Google are very good at devaluing links, and um, they have gone on record as saying this. And uh, when they introduced the disavow tool initially. In, in 2012, um, they did say that they are they are very good at devaluing links and, and sort of the disavow tool should be used as well. Um, and this is just an example, really, from a from a client that we uh, did some disavow work for. Um, we disavowed over 800 domains um, on that time period uh, highlighted on the graph. And as you can see, it didn't have any massive side effects on their visibility. Um, the visibility actually increased uh, since the disavow file was uploaded. So um, again, yeah, don't be afraid to use the, the disavow file, uh, disavow tool, should I say? And again, just a, another simple case study. And uh, once again, this is based on the process that we have in place. So a company called Transform they came to us um, in December 2013. Um, they were originally penalised with a manual links penalty back in February 2013. Um, and as I said, they, they came to us in December 2013, um, wanting us to, to lift the, the manual links penalty that they had. Um, and then five weeks later, so having having ran through this process, you know, pulling the link data, uh, manually auditing those links, um, uploading the disavow file, and filing the reconsideration request. Um, five weeks later, we did successfully have that penalty lifted. Um, so it really just um, Epitomizes the, the work that, that we uh, that we believe in, the process that we have in place in terms of getting these manual link penalties removed. So, just a few considerations as well, just to wrap up. Um, if you are struggling to, to have a manual link penalty removed, um, just just something to, to be aware of. Um, something that we've found in the past is that we we haven't we've simply not collected enough link data. So, as I said before, um, there are multiple sources on the web. Where you can uh, collect link, da link data from, um, uh, none of these will be able to to pull back a, a, a thorough list of your um, your full link profile. So it, it will need to to be regular exports uh, from these link uh, from these backlink uh, data tools. So just be aware of that. Um, secondly, uh, disavowing at domain level. Um, I think Matt Cutts went up there, went on record to say that. Um, a common problem they saw from, from SEOs and webmasters was that they were disavowing too much on, on page level rather than domain level. So just be aware of that. And you know, if, if you are using the, the disavow tool, um, don't be afraid to disavow at domain level. Uh, Google do want to see a, a conscious effort that you are um, turning your back on any previous uh, you know, spammy SEO tactics. Um, so you know, that would be a good indicator that you, you are doing that, making sure that 
um, that you are disavowing that domain level rather than page level. And uh, the last point um, is just about being aggressive when, when it comes to um, working out whether a link is, is unnatural or whether or not it, it should stay. Um, I think if, if you are unsure, if, if a site is, is suspicious but you're unsure whether or not the link is unnatural or natural, then, then I would, nine times out of ten, I would, I would be happy to just have that link, um, have that link disavowed and, and to be better safe than sorry when it comes to that. So, um, and yeah, that really wraps up what um, I wanted to talk about when it comes to uh, an inbound link audit. Thanks for that, JJ. So the key takeout there being that there is a lot of manual work involved, but it really is worth it. So for both outbound and inbound link audits, there are a few ways you can use DeepCrawl to help, which Kit will run through with you now. Thanks, Senna. Okay, so um, just having a quick look at DeepCrawl and um, from an outbound link audit, the kind of information you can get by running a crawl. So you can see here that there are a number of reports available, everything from all of your external links to it being broken down by those that have followed, uh, external links that are broken, um, any that are redirecting. And you can see here um, what one of those reports look like, looks like. So uh, this is one with all external links um, and it's giving you not just the URL but uh, the domain that you're linking to as well as where on your site the, the outbound link is coming from along with the anchor text, the HTTP status code and whether it's follow or no follow. You've also got a, if you were to look at a report such as the linked domains report you can start seeing which domains you your site tends to link to more often. So you can see in this case that Deepcrawl tends to link to Twitter more than we do to LinkedIn or Google, for instance. Um, and it starts to give you an idea of who you are relating your site with. When it comes to doing an out inbound link audit, um, we have a, a very specific type of crawl called a backlinks crawl, um, which will give you all of the information that you need. So after uploading uh, all of your backlinks from your sources such as Moz or Majestic or Webmaster Tools, um, then you can start to see exactly which ones are still linking to your site, which ones have uh, stopped linking to your site. Um, and as you run the crawl more often on a scheduled basis, you can get an idea of what's changed over time. So here, for instance, you can see that there are still 628 backlinks going to this site. Um, however, 16 of the ones that we uploaded um, are no longer linking to the site. You can go into a bit more detail on the page itself um, and you can see that um, of those 628 links, there are they are only linking to 118 pages on your site. Of those 118 pages, you can break it down even further and see that there are only 27 unique pages and there are actually 17 pages that are returning a 400 error. So that's quite a good quick win there. Great, thanks Kit. So um, would you mind just summarising for everyone then the steps that you need to take when implementing your link audit action plan in 2015? Okay, no problem. Um, so from an outbound link uh, perspective, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you've crawled all of your outbound links or crawled all of the outbound links on your site. Secondly, you want to start looking for technical issues, things such as broken links, redirected chains or any links to infected sites. Thirdly, you want to look at performing a content check on these links, um, look at exactly where on your site they're appearing. Uh, whether they're in the forums or the comments, and also consider adding nofollow to certain sections. From here, start considering what category you would place your site in and use the related sites, uh, the related search to see whether Google agrees with you. Lastly, make sure that you put, a, put in place a plan for your ongoing content um, so that you can future-proof anything going forwards. From an inbound link point of view, um, 
you want to start off by collecting your link data from multiple sources, so whether that's Webmaster Tools, Majestic, um, Open Site Explorer, um, or even Bing Webmaster Tools. Uh, secondly, determine which of the links are still live um, or no followed. Thirdly, make sure you manually audit each link and decide whether it needs to be disavowed or not. You then want to um, consider whether it's a manual penalty and in which case you need to sub uh, submit a reconsideration request detailing the actions that you've taken um, in order to remove the penalty. And from there it's a case of rinse and repeat. Um, remember it's important to maintain a clean backlink profile so regular audits should always be carried out. And it's important at this stage to actively invest in building the right links to recover any link equity that was lost during the disavow or removal process. Great stuff, thanks Kit. Um, so I think that concludes our webinar on uh, link audit for 2015. Thank you so much to JJ from Branded3 for um, partnering with us today. Um, so see you next time.